We have a special in-person episode of Classes Wisconsin Weekly, which we've only done once before with Pastor Drew. But since we have Terry Kotzma here, who's also from our congregation at Oosburg Christian Reformed Church, uh, we thought we'd sit down in the comfy chairs instead of over Zoom. And you're close enough that you could walk over. <laughs> well, good morning, Zach. Yeah, I live right across the street, so uh, uh, I was here on time. Yeah, timely, timely meeting. Here we go, starting fast. But you want to introduce yourself a little bit, yeah. Terry, and 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 well, how you come to preach at some of our churches? Sure, sure. I'm a lifelong resident of of Oostburg, grew up in in the church here, married, have uh, three children, six grandchildren, and. And I had a long career in banking, and it was by about my mid fifties. I thought it was. I heard about LDN, and and I appreciated Dave Kotzma, who is uh, actually a, a, re- a distant relative of mine, and appreciated his his work and his enthusiasm. And and I thought this LDN really looks like a opportunity that that I can expand and improve. You know my knowledge of scriptures and and. So it's it was really interesting um, going through that three year process. Uh, I thought it was uh, a very uh, much of a learning experience for me, and and it's been really rewarding to be able to go throughout the classes and and visit some churches and and do a little bit of of uh, I, again I want to ter- use the term exhorting, not preaching, yeah, right. because of course they don't have all of the all of the um, academic um, um, instructions and such behind me. But it's been uh, very, very enjoyable for my experience with that. So We had a conversation with Dave Kotzma on here once before. Um, I, our church thinks really highly of Dave, and you mentioned his enthusiasm. He's a really hardworking guy. Yeah. So on top of being a pastor at his church in, in Horicon, Marshview, uh, he does LDN, and he's got a role with a denomination. Right. Um, some missions work. So Dave is really great. And L- when we say LDN, we're talking yeah. about... Leadership Development Network is the acronym, uh, uh, a, a uh, denominational uh, initiative. I am, I don't know if it's in every classes. Uh, I'm sure it, it was uh, probably um, tried to be in, in most classes, classes. And uh, it's, I think it's quite been very active in Wisconsin classes yeah. o- over the over the years. I thought Dave had said, and I should clarify this, but I thought Dave had said it started in the Chicago area, for, in, and and typically had immigrants training lay leaders oh. who could who could preach and teach in uh, immig- different immigrant languages. Oh, okay. In, okay. in churches that need that kind of support, so we. We have that opportunity in our church. I did LDN and yeah. you did LDN before me and um, I've had some, some people come after me yet and do the program. It's really, really nice. So then one of the things when you finish uh, the LDN three-year program, you can show up at a classes meeting. Yeah, you have to be examined by classes and uh, that was an interesting experience. Uh, uh, you get some pretty some tough questions and from some of the... Uh, the, the pastors and the academics, and uh, but uh, I, I was able to sustain that, and I was thankful for that. And then uh, there's a process. You have to renew your mm-hmm. license uh, every year, and because uh, classes has to approve that on an annual basis, I think it's generally in the fall, and you, you report on uh, where you were, and then it, there's also some supervision uh, by the the current um, your your current congregation, the pastor and the, and the and the or the president of the council, the clerk of the council, uh, has to endorse your your renewal of your of your license. So there's a fair amount of oversight on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Your uh, examination was in our church. I yeah, think, yeah, it was the it was. same day as Gary Miller. I, I think it could be, yeah, yeah. Gary and I were, were in LDN at the same time, and I appreciate Gary. And, yeah. So that's another video I could link to, because we also talked to Gary on here one time. That's right. Um, who's also wonderful, Gary right. and Terry on the same day. <laughs> but the follow-up, uh, Terry, is always, what are you working on? Yeah, <clears throat> well, I, we just, I just did... Um, or Pastor Drew did a, a long series on the Belgian Confession, and as most of you know, there's like 37 different different articles of that. And early on, he asked if I would be interested in Article 36, which the is on government. the civil government. And uh, I was uh, thankful for that opportunity to to study that and reflect on that. And, and you know, clearly, Romans 13 is is a lot of the basis for that. And uh, one thing I, I learned was. 
you know, where, where God says, respect the, the government authorities, whoever, the, and God is in control of that. So um, during when, when uh, Acts was written and, and in the book of John, and there was a severe persecution. And, uh, you know, God said that he placed those governments in control. And uh, that was a very, very a good learning experience, I mm -hmm. think, for that. So hopefully... Uh, and currently, I, I'm privileged to serve uh, in the in the state assembly. So uh, that's really the reason why um, I was able to reflect on 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 that civil government because mm -hmm. I live that really every day. And and uh, so what I'm working on really right now is is later on uh, this week, I've been asked at our local Christian school to to uh, speak about what it means to be a Christian in politics. And and I'm really uh, excited about that and looking forward to that. Uh, I, I think one one thing that I'm going to stress is it, people think, well, it's really, really difficult to be a Christian in politics. Mm -hmm. Well, it's really, it's difficult to be a Christian in any occupation, sure. in any, wherever you do. And, sure. and whether you're working in a factory at Kohler Company or, or, or uh, whether you're, my, again, my previous career was in banking, whether you're in business, you, you have to treat people with honesty and with, with respect. And it's really no different or no, no more uh, difficult uh, being a Christian in politics because, you know, we, we, we believe there really there isn't sacred occupations and secular occupations mm. as Reformed Christians. Uh, everything we do and in all of our occupations, we, we, we need to stress how, how Christ is in control of all things. And, and uh, I was really surprised uh, uh, because uh, our a local uh, um, elected official who preceded me was really like the only elected official I ever really knew in politics. I really didn't know anybody. And, but when I got there, got to Madison in, in the state assembly, there are many Christians there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm part of a, of a small Bible study that meets on Wednesday mornings of a group of legislators. We're, we're led by a local pastor in, in Madison. It's, it's um, really rewarding uh, work we do. Uh, I was, I, the uh, assembly and Senate uh, both start with a word of prayer, and we were privileged to uh, have Pastor Drew lead that. There was another um, uh, local pastor who uh, led in uh, prayer in the Senate uh, at some point. And uh, so they, there's more Christians than really what you think yeah. and, and what there is. So uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to talking about that on, uh, in the next couple of days. So, What are some... What are some of the challenges that your faith runs up against in your work in politics? So as an example, in previous work, in one place I was a salesman, and maybe maybe one place where my faith would run up against challenges in that occupation was uh, trying to upsell. Yeah. Right? Or maybe when I was working as a warehouse warehouse guy and we would have to do inventory or maybe something maybe a challenge my faith would run up against was um sort of guessing at inventory instead yeah. of counting inventory. Yeah. What, yeah. Are, what are some of the things in politics that kind of bump against your well i think politi politicians elected officials get get a bad rap of promising to do anything or promising mm. to say anything or or promising uh, something you can't deliver on or 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 making something uh, you just say, "Oh yeah, I'll get at it. I'll study that. I'll look into it. I'll, 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 I'll try to fix it." When, when, you, you know, you, you just maybe placate somebody. And I think there's, there's can be a, a temptation for that. And but again, in in politics, it's no different than any occupation. There's you have to do your best and work your hardest. And and there's always temptations to slack off, to to to, to do it just enough to get by. And, and again, that's no different than anything else. What are some ways that the church could support you or pray for you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's one thing I learned when I studied the Belgian Confession, Article 36. They, uh, the, uh, the authors of that talked about how the church needs to support those in government. And, and that would be one thing that I would urge uh, local churches. They... 
people need to be involved. They need to know who their elected officials are in the Senate and, the, and in the Assembly, certainly in Congress and in the federal government. We seem to know those names, the names of our governor and such. But they should be prayed for off the pulpit. They should be prayed for by name. And because they they need that, just like many, many other occupations. But uh, I, I um, appreciate that when, when that is done. And, and I would urge uh, churches to, to do that. Well, thanks for your time today. You bet, Hopefully Brett. Hopefully it was painless. You bet, Zach. Good to see you. Yeah. Good to see you.